Hey guys, welcome back. So today I want to address what my carry gun is. Surprisingly, I was going back through my videos and I've not done a dedicated video talking about what my carry gun is. So I'm going to try to make this quick. But as you know, if you watch the channel, sometimes I tend to ramble on. Hopefully I don't bore you to tears. So for many, many years, I carried a Glock 19 for at least a decade. I carried a Glock 19. And I really like the striker fired pistols. I came to fall in love with the Glocks. The 19 is a great carry gun. I carried it at the three o'clock or 3.30 position on my hip, either inside or outside the waistband holster. And I had no reason to switch guns. Well, then HK brought out this little pistol called the VP9, extremely ergonomic, shoots extremely well in my hands. And I carried that gun for a year. I carried it at the three, three o'clock position, but that's when I started my transition to appendix carry. And I also carried an appendix until I stopped carrying the handgun. Now, I did eventually stop carrying the VP9 because I found that the gun was undersprung, had some issues um, with reliability when exposed to extreme conditions. It's just my own reasoning. I don't ask you to agree with me, but um, I know a lot of people have tried to replicate the water failures that I had with my VP9. They've done that in tap water. I stuck mine into a creek that's on the property that we shoot on all the time. Big difference called sediment. But anyway, the gun was undersprung. Just when it gets dirty, it's easy to pull the slide back and it'll stay back just out of battery. Uh, that always bothered me. And I bought a suppressor barrel for it uh, from hkparts.net and put that in there and the gun didn't run at all, um, even with the boosted suppressor, suppressor because again, the gun was horribly undersprung and prone to failure, especially when it got, gets dirty. So much so HK even, well, they won't acknowledge anything. HK keeps their mouth closed for the most part, but they silently started using VP40 springs in the VP9 to rectify some of the problems I found in my video. I'm sure other changes will come to the pistol eventually. Uh, if you're still carrying a VP9, guys, go ahead and try to get that updated spring. Get rid of that old spring because the guns are horribly undersprung. I would not trust my life to it if you're carrying it. Get the VP40 spring and put it in the gun. At least it's properly sprung at that point. So anyway, I moved away from the VP9. Now, many years ago, I was, you know, back in the... Mm, early 90s, coming into the mid 90s, the guns I preferred were hammer fired, double action, single action autos. Then the Glock caught on with me and I started carrying the Glock instead of a hammer fired gun. So I've kind of come full circle. I'm back to a hammer fired gun for my daily carry. And most of the reason for that is again, because I went to appendix. When you go to appendix style carry, if you practice a lot, you become complacent. Even the best of us become too comfortable with the firearms we're carrying and we start to make mistakes. We don't pay much, as much attention as we should, and that's when accidents happen. If you have a discharge that you do not wish to have when you're holstering appendix style, um, you're going to shoot yourself in a part of the body you're not going to want to get hit in. It's either going to kill you or um, make your wife very unhappy. So no matter what the outcome, if you get hit there, it's, it's bad all over. Being shot in the butt cheek because you're carrying at the three or four o'clock position, that's survivable. Aztec Scrubner, he just sent a bullet down his leg and he's up and around and just fine. If he would have been carrying appendix, he may not be here today. So that is why I've gone to a double action, single action auto. And you may ask, well, why is that? Well, first let's talk about the first gun that I went to which was the Sphinx. And I think a lot of you know that I, I went to the Sphinx. I made a video about it. Uh, I stomped it in mud holes and threw it in water and did all sorts of unspeakable things to it. And the gun ran just fine. And I've always been a big fan of the CZ pistol. I've been a fan of CZ pistols since you know, 20 years ago when I started reading about them, maybe even longer. When I started reading about them in Soldier Fortune magazine. Uh, you know, Jeff Cooper, Colonel Jeff Cooper, uh, who has passed away, used to talk about him. He loved the 1911 and he loved the CZ-75. He said if he's ever going to carry a 9mm, the only one he would consider to carry would be the CZ-75. And I feel the same way. The CZ is probably one of the best double action, single action autos on the market, bar none, period. Well, the Sphinx is a Swiss made CZ-75. So when I saw this gun come out, I played with it, shot it a lot, again, stomped it in mud holes, did all the stuff I could think of to it, and the gun just kept working. I fell in love with it. It was a Swiss-made CZ, can't ask for better. You have an extremely solid Czech design made by some of the finest craftsmen in the world. I thought, win-win. Only problem is, and I'll go ahead and check, make sure the weapon's clear. Only problem is, is the sights aren't night sights. The guys at Sphinx promised that there would be night sights forthcoming, and after about six months or so, of no night sights showing up, I, I decided I had to move on and I just couldn't carry the Sphinx because I require 
night sights. I, I know a lot of you guys say that they're unnecessary, whatever. We all have our various opinions. Do what works for you. What works for me is a three dot sight system with tritium and all three dots. So that didn't happen. So this gun sadly had to get retired because I couldn't get sights for it. Now I will say XS is making their big dot sights for this gun. If you're used to the big dots, which is a shallow V in the rear and a big dot in the front with tritium, uh, that sighting system is now available for the Sphinx. I'm not a fan of the big dot sight arrangement. I like having three dots. Um, so if that's uh, something that you're looking for and you do have a Sphinx that you carry and you're looking for night sights, go to the XS uh, sites or excess sites website and order yourself a pair. You'll like them. Now the holster that I carried the Sphinx in was made by Contact Concealment. And this is the holster that I carried this gun in while I was carrying it. This one is designed for appendix carry. It holds the gun straight up and down. I'm a big fan of a single clip. I don't like multi-clips. I don't like big long leather holsters that wrap around half of my body like the Super Tuck holsters. Um, I, I, don't like for, I don't like them because it's very hard to get the holster on and off. This holster I can easily put in my waistband, clip it over the belt, and just as easily get it off while seated in a vehicle and I'm not dancing around the vehicle looking uh, suspicious when I'm trying to go into a government building or the school to pick up my child. So this is uh, the holster that I carried for a long time. Now you'll see me carrying contact concealment and you'll also see me carrying high threat concealment holsters regularly. These, these are the only two holsters that I ever use. So when I retired the Sphinx, I figured, what the heck, let's just go straight to CZ. After all, I've known them for many years. I've had my first CZ-75B since the early 90s, let's say. I don't even know when I bought it. And I've been a fan of the handguns forever. I've collected them forever. So I know when people started to realize I was carrying a CZ, I saw some comments of folks saying, Oh my gosh, Mac finally discovered CZ. No, I discovered them decades ago, guys. I've, I've collected them, I just haven't carried them. So when I wanted to look for that single action, double action pistol, of course, CZ is what I turned to, and this is my current carry gun. So this is a CZ75 PO1 compact. It has an aluminum frame, steel slide, has the traditional CZ75 inverted rail system. Uh, I do have the uh, True Glow TFX Pros sights on here, and these are amazing sights, guys. These have light culminators in the top here, and they also have tritium in them. So no matter what the light conditions are, I have three big green dots that I can pick up. It doesn't matter if I'm standing in sunlight or in complete darkness. I have a three-dot sight system that works awesome. Also, you'll notice it has a shelf right here on the front, so you can run the slide of the weapon with the sights if you need to for one-handed manipulations. Uh, this gun does have uh, a hammer drop safety on it. This one has been Cajunized. I'll explain that here in a second. But you have the hammer drop safety, and that's how the gun would be carried with the gun at the half cock position, which makes for a very short trigger pull. Now, let's talk about the Cajun trigger. The guns are right around $479, $500. Bucks. The guns aren't very expensive, but you're going to have $100 bucks in the sights, and you're going to have $425 bucks in the pro carry package, which is what I had Cajun do for me on this gun. So now this is a very expensive carry gun. It went from very affordable with sights, VZ grips, which you see here on the guns. These are G10 VZ grip panels that I have on the gun. Uh, you get those included in the Cajun trigger. Now you have close to a $1,000 handgun, and it is an expensive carry gun. But this gun, everybody that shoots it will tell me it's the best shooting handgun they've ever shot. And that's why people like CZs worldwide, they win competitions. So with the Cajun trigger in it, this is the Pro Carry Package trigger, which we now, I'm so in love with the Cajun triggers. We're now dealers for, for Cajun Gunworks, and we install Cajun triggers in pistols here at Copper Custom. But with the hammer at the half cock position where you normally carry it, look how easy this trigger pull is on that double action. That double action trigger pull is only six pounds. But the benefit is over a striker fired pistol, and this is my HTC high threat concealment holster I'm, I'm carrying outside the waistband today. This is the high threat concealment holster. Again, contact concealment or high threat, the only two holsters I use. When I'm pushing the gun into the holster, I can, especially appendix, when I go to push the gun in, I can protect the, the trigger guard by having my finger right here, and I can put my thumb on the hammer as I push the gun into the holster. If I start to feel any resistance, something is pushing on that trigger, be it a shirt tail, a, the, the tail end of a jacket that you might be using a, as a cover garment, a zipper, I've seen zippers get in there, into the trigger guard, and as you push the gun in, it pushes the trigger and bang on a striker fired gun. If anything starts to push on that trigger as I'm seating the holster, immediately I'll feel that with the hammer starting to come back and I stop pushing. 
All right, so that's the reason why I want a double action handgun for appendix carry. There's no manual safety on this gun. I'm not an advocate for manual safety on any type of carry gun. My safety is just like a double action revolver. It's that heavy first trigger pull. Six pounds isn't exactly heavy. You can see just how short that trigger pull is. It has a very short reset and then about a four and a half pound uh, single action trigger pull. The, this double action trigger acts as my safety two ways. Heavy trigger pull, and I can also feel that hammer coming back so I know to stop pushing the gun if it's um, not going to holster. If I'm holstering and I, I shouldn't be, I need to stop what I'm doing because I'm about to shoot myself in, a, uh, in the nether regions. So that's my, my primary carry gun as of right now. Now another thing that a lot of people don't know, I may have said in passing, is that I always keep a, a backup gun that's fig, uh, configured very similarly. And this one is an Omega. This is how um, you know, the, my, my gun, of course, had a standard CZ trigger in it when I bought it. This Omega I purchased as my backup gun, has the same grips, has the same TFX Pro sights on it. It does not have a Cajun trigger in it. I see no reason to do that. I don't want to wrap up another thousand bucks in it. I can live with the Omega trigger that it comes with here. And this gun is my backup gun should my primary gun go down. It has a decocker. This one just happens to be ambi where it's not ambi on my primary carry gun, but I'm right-handed. But it's very familiar, and this gun would get me by until I get my primary gun back up and running. So, now, like I said, I've collected CZs my entire life. One day I should do an all-CZ video. This is a uh, SP-01 um, Tactical. I think that's what they call it. Yeah, Tactical. And this one has the gray finish on it because it's a suppressor-ready gun. And you'll see me using this gun a lot in my suppressor videos when I'm doing testing. I love this gun. I also have the same gun as a CZ-75. It doesn't have the, the tactical rail here on it. Uh, it's just a standard CZ-75 that also has a threaded barrel, but notice the suppressor height sights. They're very tall. This is one of the best suppressor hosts I've ever used. I love my CZs for suppressor hosts. Hard to find, can be expensive. I can't find the compact version of this. I thought I had one on Gun Broker, but I didn't. I lost it. That was over a year ago. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to put one of those in the collection because I love the, the suppressor-ready guns. A lot of you guys had asked me why didn't I consider the Rami, and this is the Rami. Uh, I, I, this is just a little bit too small for me. I like the size of the Glock 19 sized uh, SP01 compact. The Rami is just a little bit too small. This one has its extended magazine in it, but if you put its standard 10 round magazine in it versus its uh, 15 rounds, is that what this one is or is it 14? That's 14 rounds, just like my carry gun, which I should mention. My carry gun has 14 in the magazine, one in the chamber for a total of 15 rounds. The Rami is a very small little gun. This is based heavily on the CZ-75. This one is configured with a decocker. You can also get them configured with a slide safety on it. I should have also mentioned on the Omega. Uh, this one has a decocker, but with the Omega trigger system, you can actually make it 1911 style where you can carry it cocked and locked. This particular Rami has the hammer drop safety on it, which you can see right there. And it's a very small little gun. The problem is, is that when I put my finger on the trigger, it fits fine, except for the fact that my, my trigger, or I'm sorry, my pinky falls off the gun. Now I can carry it with its extended magazine, which gives me 14 rounds. And if I carry it like this, why would I bother? Because this is the critical dimension, guys, when you're trying to conceal a gun, how long that grip is. That's, that's the concealment factor. If you're gonna run this extended clip, just get a gun, I'm sorry, uh, extended magazine. I don't know why I said clip. If you run an extended magazine, if it's gonna be the same size, as another pistol, just get the other pistol. That, or some people will carry this as a backup magazine. If you do that, I highly recommend ditching this little slide over sleeve. And at this point, this is just a standard CZ-75 or um, CZ compact magazine, okay? Same, same magazines worth in bo both guns. This is the Omega's magazine. It works just fine in the Rami. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Uh, and no, I'm not sponsored by Starbucks. Everybody accuses me of being sponsored by my drink. <clears throat> my throat just gets dry. So, yeah, if you're going to do that, you might as well just uh, just get a gun that has a bigger grip, and that's why I don't carry the Rami, one of the reasons. Um, it, it's small. It's nice. A lot of people use it. Very popular handgun. It's just not for me. So, guys, hopefully that answers all your questions you may have about my carry gun. My carry gun is the SP-01 Compact. That's, I have no intention of changing this gun. I'll carry it until it fails me or some other reason. A lot of folks have asked me what my belt is that I carry it with. You've seen it in video. This is made by Core, K-O-R-E, and uh, it's a ratcheting belt system. You've seen other YouTubers talk about them. I haven't talked about it yet because I want to carry it for at least a year. I'm not one of those guys that 
runs right out and jumps in front of a camera after I get something or even a week later and say it's the best thing since sliced bread. I want to see how this, this holds up. I've noticed a little bit of buckling in the ratchet system there. You can see where it, it's bending. It hasn't broken, but I'm just looking for failure points. I did have one failure, which the manufacturer told me was just a flaw in the belt buckle. They've since sent me another one. I just haven't switched it out. But the belt buckle bites into the belt with a, you know, you've seen this before, it has a little, little claws on the teeth. And you slide the belt in, flip that lever over, and the teeth bite into the material and hold it. Well, it was just biting into the leather backing here. So you have leather on one side. You have nylon on the other, like, I don't know, Cordura or something like that on the back side. And then in the middle, you have a stiffener. This gun belt, I cannot crush the belt. I'm trying as hard as I can, I cannot get that belt to crush like a standard leather belt. So its rigidity is very strong and it makes for a great gun belt. They've replaced the buckle. All that happened was my, pan my pants fell down almost on me one day at the office because this had pulled out from the leather. It hadn't bitten into the, the stiffener in the middle. It was just into the leather and it just eventually pulled the leather off. And I had to cut the belt back a little bit and get it back up and running. Of course, sent me another belt buckle when I sent them pictures and told them what happened. So they took good care of me. So I'll, I'll comment later on this belt. Uh, let you guys know long term how it's holding up. It's a ratcheting system. You can see the little ratchets here. You put it into the belt buckle, just push it, and then you'll hear it ratchet. I don't know if it's truly a ratchet, but that's what I call it. And so that's how it, it locks to release. You have a little button right here on the side, and the belt just comes apart. Very handy little belt. So far, I like it. It's working well for me. <coughs> Excuse me again. Jeez. My throat is so dry and scratchy. Seems to be working well for me. I'll give you guys an update video in the future. Guys, if you have any questions, oh, the ammunition. <laughs> yes, I am really carrying the Underwood Extreme Defenders. If you haven't seen my videos on this ammunition, go check them out. I really do carry the ammunition. Uh, it's, it's awesome. I've been carrying it ever since I tested it a year or so ago. So go check out those videos and you'll see why I carry the, uh, the Underwood Extreme Defender loads, the plus P's. All right, guys, if you have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, you know, you can ask those questions down below. I will try to stick around answering any of the questions you guys may have, but I felt I owed it to you an explanation of what it was I was carrying uh, because you've seen me switch carry guns several times over the last year or so, two years, and it seems like I was changing guns like I did underwear. I don't normally do that, but I tried to explain to you in this video why I went from each gun and how I wound up with the CZ, and again, I have no plans to change that. I'm going to continue to carry the CZs. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, YouTube has decimated all YouTubers' monetization. We make no money to keep our channels up and running through YouTube anymore. So a lot of us have gone to Patron, and Patron is a crowdfund site. And you can, and crowdfunding is popular now for business startups, all sorts of stuff. It's just kind of new age funding, and it allows us to have a direct relationship with our, our fans. I answer all private messages, all emails that are sent through Patron. We give outstanding deals, deals you will not find at lower price anywhere on the internet uh, to our patrons from our, our retail shop, Copper Custom. I write blog posts that get posted nowhere else, and you get behind the scenes stuff going on. We post their behind the scenes information. I even ask you guys questions. I asked my patrons, for example, what they thought of the melting I had found on my, my SIG P320 after I did the 1000 round test. So I even reach out to you guys there. But again, I, I communicate directly with everybody that's a patron. I will answer all your emails, all that good stuff. So it's a great way to support the site. Another way to support the site is just to swing by and check out Copper Custom. We have a brand new website, which I think is the best online retail site out there in terms of usability. I invite you to swing by and check it out. And that can be found at coppercustom.com. Also guys, please join the NRA. We have four years, four years right now under the Trump administration a friendly White House, a friendly House and a friendly Senate, and a new administration at the NRA, which is very much aligned with the way most of us think. Uh, there's been a, a change at the NRA, and we have like a perfect storm right now. Four years. I've never seen a situation like this before in my life. Just give the NRA a chance. I'm one of their staunchest critics. I'm now a life member because of Pete Brownell, who is the new president. Give them four years. There's a link down below. Follow that link, click it, renew your subscription or your membership or become a new member. Some of that money will come to me, but every single cent that the NRA sends to me, I donate to Hero Hunt, which is an organization that takes out uh, wounded warriors, 
takes out airmen, Marines, soldiers, sailors that were wounded in the line of duty, takes them out, gets them in the field hunting. It, they also work with first responders, police, fire, EMT, outstanding organization. And if you, and spread that link around guys, share it because every single cent that comes to me from that link being used to get a new member to the NRA, all that money goes to a nonprofit organization I believe in 110%. Guys, I can't thank you enough for watching for all these years. I look forward to your questions down below. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you guys soon.